sometimes we don't know where we're going. So we left Enkhausen this morning and we actually don't know where we're going yet. And the journey isn't always smooth. I'm hoping I don't get seasick again. Ugh. But wherever we end up, we usually find something interesting. Join us on a directionless adventure to somewhere that we had actually meant to go to for a while, where we get into all sorts of shenanigans, including suffering our first big loss as filmmakers. Things can't be perfect all the time, but that actually makes for a better story anyway. So, let's begin. And this is Aladino. Our journey began a few years ago when this boat fell off a crane. After four years of rebuilding her, we named her Magic Carpet and we set sail to go around the world as slowly as possible. This season, we're sailing in the Netherlands. Join us as we explore the history and strange natural beauty of this seafaring nation. From the canals of Amsterdam to the pastoral islands of the Wadden Sea, welcome to Magic Carpet in the Netherlands. New episode every Friday. So we're leaving Marker Wadden. Indeed. And there's a tall ship following us out of the harbor. There's three of them. I find this actually quite beautiful. I mean, they're only used to be passenger ships from the nearby towns. But yeah, I mean, why not make those passenger ships uh, look authentic and beautiful? So I think this is a very nice use. And I think he's uh, gonna wanna pass us. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> If you haven't seen our last episode from this place that we're leaving now, Marker Wadden, check it out because it's a pretty amazing place actually. Now we're headed somewhere different yet again. We didn't have much of a plan. We just headed west and figured we'd cross the dike back into the Isolmere. because there's way less chop today so I won't run the risk of feeling seasick like we did on like I did on our last sail you know I always almost feel kind of like embarrassed when I get seasick I felt I feel a bit better now though because we met this really cool couple in the harbor on this really beautiful little boat with tan bark sails and uh, it was built in the 1930s they've sailed it all over the Atlantic this tiny little I think it was like 31 or 32 feet and uh, they were just really cool, you know, when you see images of cruisers and old books about sailing, the black and white photos of the tanned cruisers sort of squinting at the film camera. It looked like these, these people could be in those photos. And they said that, you know, they've sailed everywhere and they actually get the most seasick here because the waves are so choppy. Uh, they said it's totally normal, so I felt a bit better about that actually. Because, <laughs> yeah, he said he often gets seasick here too. So good. I'm not the only one. We had a pretty uneventful short sail along the dike. Now we're coming up to a lock. Uh, this is a lock that goes through the dike which separates the Marker Mirror from the Isle Mirror. And last time we came through this dike, we passed it on sort of the east side near a town called Lelystadt. Now we're passing it on the west side. So there's locks at both ends. Um, and we're now near the town of Enkhausen? Yes, exactly. Yeah, Enkhausen. So this is Enkhausen. There's a big ship coming in. It's almost weird to see one again. A few weeks now that we haven't passed one of these monsters, but this was our by-the-minute experience on the Rhine River. 
So, now we're trying to figure out which harbor to go to because there's many options. Look at all those sneaks. So there's these boats that are built here in Enkhausen, and but what are they called? They're puffins. <laughs> they're really badass boats. Okay, Maya said it's actually puffins. <laughs> but to me, the puffin is a seaworthier. And what it, what's the name of that uh, yacht designer that you that you like? Doodly Dicks. I love Doodly Dicks designs. <laughs> Doodly Dicks. Oh man, sometimes Aladino's mispronunciations yes. are golden. But, but okay. Doodly Dicks did not design the Poofin. No, no, he designed <laughs> other beautiful boats. Uh, the Poofin is from uh, Van der Meere, which I don't know how to pronounce his name either. Uh, but there is one right in front of us and uh, wow, yes, it ignites the flame in my eyes. The flame in your eyes, mm. baby, write a poem. <laughs> Fire. Although Enkhausen has a lot to offer, we actually didn't take much advantage of the town itself. We had a list of tasks to get done, and sometimes you've just got to buckle down and do them. We cleaned, edited videos, and did all those other boat life tasks, which are actually a pretty consistent part of our life, but which often don't make it into the finished vlogs. We also got some groceries, which is always a bit of a tiring task, especially since the more affordable grocery stores are usually at some distance from the harbors. Whenever Aladino and I go to the grocery store, we bring uh, reusable cloth veggie bags. I don't know where they are right now. Um, and that's to put all of our veggies in so that we don't have to get plastic bags, but our experience here is that you often don't even have that option. A lot of the things we want to buy, veggies, are already in packaged bags. Like, I really wanted to buy bok choy, it only came in plastic. Um, Albert Hein is particularly bad for this. That's a very well-known grocery store here. You can buy like pre-chopped onion in plastic bags. You can buy pre-chopped lettuce in plastic bags. You can buy pre-chopped, like just everything in plastic bags, pre-chopped, it's ridiculous. So I will say that about the Netherlands. Terrible, terrible, terrible plastic consumption. Tackling a to-do list always feels good when you get it all done and then you can settle down in the evening to a clean boat, some well-stocked groceries, and the smell of fresh laundry. As the sun set, we put the drone up for some sunset views. Enkhausen is actually a hot spot for boat builders with many famous yards here, but for some reason we felt itchy to leave. I don't know why, sometimes this just happens when we feel compelled to keep sailing onwards, even if we don't know where onwards is yet. Hello. Hello. So we've got the sail set. We're moving along quite nicely. Or sail, I should say. We've just got the Genoa up going downwind. It's really nice. So we left Enkhausen this morning and we actually don't know where we're going yet. So that's what we've been sitting here discussing. on the other side of the Isolmere on the eastern side. So we're sailing over there and as we are getting farther away from the dike the chop is getting more chance to build up and now it's actually quite choppy at times. Uh, the motion's pretty uncomfortable. Everything is sh so shallow here that the chop when the wind blows is really sloppy and really confused and it makes for a very uncomfortable motion. Not too bad at the moment. We changed our point of sale, so it evened out a little bit now, but yeah. I'm hoping I don't get seasick again. Ugh. Yeah, but that seems unlikely. 
there was a wind shift and it feels already like there is a bit of cross seas because of yeah. the wind shift. Yeah. It's funny. Totally. The Isalmir chop really is unpleasant. Although the waves are relatively small, the short frequency and confused pattern make for a terribly turbulent ride. Magic carpet bobbed unmercilessly, and I felt myself slowly sinking into the foggy realm of seasickness. I tried to stave it off by steering and eating some dry bread. In the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the Isalmir, it is six meters deep. And you don't see land. <laughs> you see, you don't see land because it's so low, but you see all the windmills everywhere. Yeah, you see windmills. Yeah, because it's so low, exactly. <laughs> so fast I do feel like the motion of the boat has smoothed out a little bit because we're just under a bit more pressure from the wind um, which is actually a good thing because I, I like the slightly steadier motion actually I learned something kind of cool the other day uh, I was reading a book by Roger Olson about cruising and boats in general the cruising life and apparently most boats are designed with a little bit of weather helm in mind because the alternative to weather helm is lee helm and lee helm is when the boat wants to push off the wind instead of into the wind and the danger there is that that could eventually lead to an accidental jive which is really dangerous for all involved whereas an accidental tack is annoying but it's not really going to do too much damage um, so that's an interesting tidbit. Weather helm is an intentional design feature. A little bit. There a can little be too bit. Much. There can be too much. And that is uh, the difficulty yeah. in getting that right. Totally. Wow, we're going for it. Totally. Six, seven knots. Yeah. With uh, reefed Genoa. Really gusting. Oh, I just got the camera. It was a wild ride and there weren't many other boats around. When we finally neared Stavoren, we were covered in spray and ready for a break. The choppy waves chased us into the breakwater and even the protected section had some swell. The next step was to go through a lock and into the much more protected inland waters, where we'd look for a harbour for the night. We watched as other boats waiting for the lock were tossed against the walls by the deceptively powerful swell, so we decided to just float in the middle until we could finally enter. Still a little shaky. It was an adventure to come in here, but the hull is not under the wind pressure anymore, so it's already a lot better. Whew. Stavoren is in the province of Friesland, a place which has a complicated relationship to the rest of the Netherlands. Friesland is the only Dutch province to have its own language, called West Frisian, and along with it comes a fierce sense of identity. By the way, if you were ever wondering what the difference is between Holland and the Netherlands, Holland refers to only two provinces in the Netherlands, South Holland and North Holland. These two provinces are quite populous and contain the big city of Amsterdam, so somewhere along 
along the way, Holland became synonymous with the Netherlands, at least by international visitors. But if you make the mistake of referring to Holland when you're in Friesland, you'll get quickly corrected. And often, a Frisian person will insist, you're not even in the Netherlands, you're in Friesland. Yes, the flag of Friesland is the cutest thing ever. Apparently, the red symbols are supposed to be lily leaves, not hearts, but it still looks pretty sweet. That's true. Docking was stressful. It's really it's stressful when you're docking and it's so windy and you don't know exactly the harbor. You don't know the place that you're going to really. Um, but I mean, we got in no problem. It was just always tense yeah. for a moment there. And also an update: the system always here in the Netherlands is um, you go into a box. You have your own dedicated box, and there is bollards behind the boat. Well, I mean, mostly posts. we go posts. Not, yeah. Oh, posts. And we go bow first usually, and then you have to uh, tie on the posts. Yeah. It's so windy, I don't know if this audio is going to be good. Probably not. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go explore town. All Dutch towns along the water are built behind a protective dike to prevent flooding. Water management in the Netherlands is absolutely incredible and absolutely essential, with an extremely complex system of locks, dikes and pumps keeping the water from flooding in. No matter what direction you walk to in the Netherlands, you end up seeing boats again! It's true! And what boats! Nice! This is super cool! just incredible how there really are boats everywhere. I mean, look, it's like some places have little alleyways and here there's just little canals instead of little alleyways. I love this. I mean, Venice is famous for its canals, but meanwhile, the Netherlands is over here like, that's, the, that's our entire country. <laughs> We had been told to visit Friesland by countless different people, mostly for its beautiful network of inland lakes and canals perfect for sailing. But unfortunately, Magic Carpet is a bit too deep to take full advantage of them. Although later on, we did still get to have a real Frisian experience, but that's still for another episode. At first glance, Friesland was living up to what we had heard about it, a place of cute towns, lots of inland sailing, and a huge amount of boats. We saw a few things that we want to go check out when the businesses are open because most things were closed at the moment just because it's a bit later in the day. But now, time to return to our lovely home, think about dinner, I think I should edit a movie, the usual. The next day we meandered around the harbour grounds to see what it offered. And we went out to go look at the harbor. We didn't bring the camera, but I actually had to run back to come get you guys because this harbor is so cool. The Netherlands has the best harbors I have ever experienced and it costs 15 euros a night, which is crazy. First up, we have kayaks and paddle boards and paddles. Want to go out for a paddle? Go for it. Here's the launch. You go down the launch, you go straight into the water and voila! We will definitely go kayaking later, but first, there's more to show you because I'm only just getting started here. What you doing there, Amore? A trampoline! Woo! And for the kids, one of these. Well, this might also be for the kids, but <laughs> we choose to ignore that fact. <laughs> Next 
activity! Soccer! Yay! Next up, kayaking. The whole harbor was like an amusement park until, that is, tragedy struck. So we have some really sad news. And it's, I don't know where Dini's disappearing to, but it's, it's why my video quality is so bad right now. Because I'm filming on my phone because when we were filming the kayaking earlier, we had our camera on a tripod on land. And I mean, we do that all the time, set the tripod up, never even thought twice about it, but a huge gust came, blew it over, broke our ND filter, which we could have lived with. Um, oh, oh. oh. There's one on it. That's okay. I'll find them. What a day. We'll have a small boat. Yeah, but basically not and only the ND filter, the camera doesn't work yeah. either. And I took it apart, it looks, brand new inside so I can and I'm I'm yeah nowhere certified to find out um, anything but loose connections yeah really sad we rely on our camera so much this is a huge blow tomorrow's Sunday so and we're in this really small town um, I guess it's called no film Sunday it's called no film Sunday I mean I do have this phone but it's yeah, I don't know. I mean, we can film on the phone and the GoPro for a little bit. That's how we filmed our whole first season, phone and GoPro. Go. It's just so sad to go backwards once you're used to a nice camera. Yeah. Anyway, we might have to buy a new one. Ugh, what a blow. Literally, also, it was quite a blow that blew it over. <laughs> An unfortunate ending, to be sure. But don't worry, next Friday there's still another magic carpet vlog. We wouldn't leave you hanging. In almost three years of boat life, we've actually never broken our camera. So I guess that luck couldn't hold out forever. Anyway, that's all part of it. Things break, you've got to replace them. Any sailor will tell you that. So thank you for watching. All of your support is what makes it possible for us to buy a new camera when stuff like this happens, and we sincerely appreciate that. Every view, like, comment, and subscription helps us out. And as always, huge thank you to the patrons for providing direct support to the video productions and an extra huge thanks to these folks who really go the extra mile to make sure magic carpet keeps being produced and we'll see you all next friday